are happy to bring on Paul Seawald. And Paul, I, I think we have to ask you to tilt your camera down because as we understand, you've got some pretty good swag on. Let's go. There you we go, got it. Baby. You, you guys are sending out. me good shirts. I got to put them on. Yeah, you fill uh, that out like a shape. pitcher. <laughs> I do what I can. I do what I can. It's all right. I got the dad bod working already. We're two years in. I just got the dad bod going. It's all right. If you were, if you were, if somebody was, you know, you remember in the minor leagues, you always had to wear collared shirts. We were just talking about it. You know, it's like, you got to wear a collared shirt. It doesn't matter if it's 110 in Salt Lake City, you still got to wear a collared shirt. If somebody rolled onto the bus with a Rutgers R on their collared shirt, what you would say, what would you say? Do you know where Rutgers is? Well, the only person that would do that is sitting next to you. And he, I'm pretty sure he did that at least on one of our road trips, but he had a little more service time than me. So I let it slide. <laughs> Listen, dude, I, I could wear whatever the hell I wanted to wear, all right? And I didn't give, I didn't give two craps about it. Paulie, how you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. How are you? Good, good. I didn't get a chance to see you play our pitch this week. I was working with the Yes Network. I was hoping to see you in there. Some close games, just two out of three lost. But, yeah, I saw the home run. I think Cal Raleigh hit the home run to left. Or no, that was uh, Ty France. Ty France, yeah. And I look in the bullpen, and all you guys are going crazy. Were the fans giving it to you out there or something? Is that why you went a little extra going crazy? No, I think – I mean, fans are always giving it to you in New York, but it wasn't any worse than normal. And, you know, I think we just were excited that, uh, you know, we had had a couple of struggles the night, a couple of nights before, and uh, we are just excited the offense got it going. Those guys have been working really hard, and, you know, to not see the results, it's uh, it's frustrating. And, you know, when it when it comes out and you put up a 10 spot, we were, we were just excited for the boys. Did you guys, did you know, did you guys know, was, was the team talking in, in the dugout before the game or in the clubhouse? Did you know that you guys were going to absolutely take BP off of Domingo Herman last night? Well, Scott threw, Scott threw a little meeting the night before. And, you know, you guys know every time when you have a meeting, the next day you respond and it's like, all right, well, we could have just done this before the meeting and we didn't need to have one of those, but it was, uh, um, he'll take it as a, as a well-timed well-timed meeting we'll take it as you know we just got the bats going we, we always talk about meetings you have to have meetings when you have a favorable matchup so scott service always. is not he's not a dummy so he knew so really everybody like scott service knew you guys were going to absolutely bang against mingo of course he did you know the last one was right before we went to oakland for three days he he's very strategic <laughs> at his times he he knows exactly what he's doing went out on a limb I, Exactly. Exactly. He, you know, I didn't see, we didn't have a meeting the night before we faced Garrett Cole. We just managed to have it before we faced our mind. So um, <laughs> yeah, not his first time. <laughs> Paul, we were talking about golf earlier. Have you gotten the chance? Did you watch the U S open over the weekend? I watched a lot of it. I watched a lot of it. Father's day. So my wife gave me a pass. We got to have the golf open. It was, uh, it was nice. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, kind of, you know, I was kind of hoping Rory would come back and, and win it. It's been it's been nine years, but it was uh it was quite the tournament. LACC looked fantastic, and uh, you know if there's any members listening, I would love to uh, I would love to stop by when we play the Dodgers. I think that was an excellent pitch. I uh, I second it and bring us all along to check it out when you do. You mentioned okay. Father's Day. I know you had some really cool custom cleats. Can you tell us about those? They looked really nice. Yeah. So uh, you know Father's Day morning we're. You know, we're getting ready, just having a little family time before you have to hit the road. And and Molly brought in a pair of Adidas, a, an Adidas box. And I was kind of like, I, you know, I don't really need shoes for Father's Day, but I appreciate it. Um, and op I opened the box and saw these fire cleats and just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. She totally had me fooled. I had no idea what she was working on. And, um, you know, just to rep, just to rep being Chloe's dad was pretty special. And, and uh, I really appreciated it. Hey, I want to go back because I wasn't here the last time we talked about this, but I feel like this is pretty interesting in your part when you played in new york against the mets you brought out some antics a little bit man and i i, I gotta ask you about this because i saw you go to the ear i saw you get a little crazy you know you're a little chitty chatty with the booze or whatever i gotta hear i i know you're a competitive guy but was this planned out is this something you were like waiting to get back in new york for or was it just something that just came randomly yeah, I mean, we, you know, you get to schedule kind of like in August for the year before or for the next year. And, you know, I got to see that we were going to make the trip back in May and um, obviously had that part of the of the calendar circled. And, uh, you know, it, I enjoyed my four years there, but, you know, they didn't go nearly as well as I had hoped. And, um, 
the fans know that the, it didn't go as well as I'd hoped. And, you know, they, they kind of let me know when I came in there on Friday and, and then they weren't, you know, they weren't too excited with how well I pitched on Friday and they kind of booed me a little bit harder on Sunday. And, you know, I didn't really think about it. It just kind of happened and, um, you know, just stir the pot a little bit and, and, uh, and get them going. But it's not, it wasn't anything crazy. It's just a little something, uh, teasing those fans for, for the booze all those years. I wanna, it, I, felt, it felt pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> it, felt, it felt really yeah. good, Todd. It felt really good. Yeah, there's nothing like three up, three down, uh, get the hold there in the eighth and, and really silence them. That, that was pretty nice. So those Chloe cleats, the Chloe dad cleats, did you or did you not cry when you opened them? Any, any tear? <laughs> Um, I didn't cry when I opened. I probably had I gotten into the game, uh, probably would have been kind of emotional. Make sure you had the Father's Day cleats. That would have been that probably would have been a little emotional. It was uh, no no crying when I opened them. Uh, always always a little sentimental when we have to go on the road trip. And she, you know, she says, "Miss you, Daddy." That's uh, that's more hard than than opening the cleats for sure. Ah, uh, that's the worst. That is the worst, especially when you're you guys know it. It's brutal, especially when your kids think you're an app at that age. You know, they like. They like FaceTime you and then they're, you see them like trying to swipe across like, all right, dad, like that's enough time. Like they, they think you're an app for every other week. It's the worst. She's super, she's really enjoying pressing the red button on the FaceTime, which just ends all the FaceTime cards. <laughs> so Molly will give her the phone and she just, she just touches it immediately, calls, ends it. And so then I got to call back and then Molly's going to answer and then Chloe, okay. It's like, all right, at this point, never mind. Yeah. And she can, and you can bring that up at her wedding too, because you can say, well, now, <laughs> Now it's officially red button time. You have to go and get <laughs> married to this guy. So that's how you exactly. give it away. You hit the red button at her wedding. <laughs> Perfect. I like that. I'll take the, I'll take notes. I know that your parents are both accountants and I didn't expect to have hot accounting talk on this Friday here, but wow. I have to ask, how much does this come up in your daily life? Like come tax time, are you like, yeah, I'm set. I got this. And given your background in school too, what happens here? Uh, you You'd be a little ashamed that I don't use my accounting degree or my parents for any for anything anymore, especially come April. I, you know, we have a financial advisor that kind of takes care of all of it. So um, all my teachers are ashamed of me. My parents are a little disappointed in me, but um, you know that's just the way it's worked out. And luckily, Plan A's worked really well, and I haven't had to go to Plan B. It's it's one of those things where you can double check though if you really if you really were uncertain about some things, like because I see my stuff. And I'm like, send it to him. I, I have no clue what's going on. They're just try and save me as much money as possible. And I'm still angry at the end of the day. <laughs> Come tax season, because when I used to play, the money that I would give up, holy cow. Yeah, well, they don't really tell you in uh, Accounting 201 what it's like to file in 25 states and make sure you do this and that. And so yeah. um, I'm still a little behind. If I, I could do the absolute basic uh, tax return, but that's about it. So I, I'm, I'm thankful we have people we can trust with that. All right. Now we, we talked about the New York thing where you, you let them hear it. You know, I love that. And you play on emotion. Tell me about the whole, uh, the whole nailer thing, like a little, a little intimidation with the net, just a little, or was that because you're, you're, you're dad, you're dad, like you're dad. Yeah, but that's what it was. No, you know what? I, you know, if somebody hits the ball 500 feet off of me for a walk off Homer and they're going to celebrate, they're going to celebrate. And that's fine. And I, you know, I would never have any problem with that. And you know, Josh is very competitive and, and, you know, I assume that most Cleveland fans really love it, you know, it just, but when you end the game and it's right in front of me, it's, you know, it's, it's just playful. It's playful sportsmanship. It's nothing crazy. I don't, you know, I don't really think that it, you know, needed to blow up or anything like that. And um, if he ends up taking me deep at some point and he rocks the baby, then by all means, he's allowed to do that when, uh, when you get the job done. So, um, you know, it's just exciting. We got the series win right there and, and kind of let it slip and, you know, I thought it was a little bit funny. Uh, maybe some people didn't love it as much, and it's just you know, I just think it's I think it's more you know just having fun out there. It's all good. Do you do you have something you do when you get a save or anything? Have you have you you know the dagger? I don't know. Have you have you thought of anything? I mean, Chapman gives the <laughs> the stare down, and the then he goes. Down. I mean, you. I mean, guys, what's his name used to give up the the axes up there for his dad, the reliever for the Giants back in the day. Um, yeah. You have anything? No, I, you know, if I punch somebody out to end, to end the game, it's usually a scream, an excited scream, uh, but that I, I don't really do anything else. And then, you know, I, I set a heart to, to my wife and Chloe. So uh, that's not intimidating whatsoever. So if they want to, they want to talk about <laughs> that, that would... then they can do that, but that's uh, not intimidating whatsoever. 
That would scare me because I think you would send it to me, but I mean, that's, that's okay. Either, either way, that's fine. You do have jump around though. And that intro gets pretty hype. I mean, they mm. did a whole light show for you and everything. Yeah. You know, last year they started, they tried to figure out we were having such a great year in the pen and they, and they tried to figure out like we, this group needs a nickname and they came up with the Bomberos and they started doing, you know, a pretty good light show. It's uh, yeah, this is pretty, this is pretty good. It gets me, gets me pretty jacked up when I get to go in a game when this is what they throw out for me. I don't know that anybody doesn't get, I, I don't know who doesn't get hyped to jump around. That's, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. It's fun to watch too. And I know you're working on a charity project that is pretty near and dear to your heart. Can you talk about that and share it with us? Yeah. So uh, it's called Seawall Strikeouts for Kids. It's a, it's a campaign we have going on um, for the second year in a row. Last year we did it through a company called Eastside Baby Corner and now they're called Kid Vantage. Um, it's just an amazing organization here in the, in the Seattle area that, that helps families and kids that are underprivileged and that don't necessarily have the resources that, um, that some of us are really lucky enough to have. Uh, you know, when we had our daughter, Chloe, two years ago, we just, you know, we realized how difficult it is to be a parent and, and everything that goes through that. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to have every resource that we could possibly imagine between family, money, everything. And, um, and it's still difficult. So I just can't imagine a single parent or, or a parent working three jobs and, um, all these parents that just want to do everything they can for their kids, but they just don't have the resources. And that's what kid Vantage can do. They can get, you know, diapers, formula, they can fix a car seat. Anyone that's had to do a car seat in the last 10 years know how difficult that is Ooh. to make sure that it's safe. Um, clothes, everything, everything. And this organization can get it to people who need it. Um, and that's the, what the most important thing is. These, these, these parents, everyone, everyone knows you're too proud to make sure to ask for help. And, um, kid Vantage just does a great job of getting the resources of the people that need them the most. And, uh, so we put together a little seawall strikeouts for kids. So every strikeout uh, we have this season, Molly and I will will donate four hundred dollars to to Kid Vantage, and and we're you know we're trying to get as many people as we can to join us. We raised almost seventy five thousand dollars last year, and and we're trying to top that this year. And uh, we're really really excited. You can go to you can go to any of my social media pages, my Instagram, my Twitter, and I have the uh, the budget campaign link in there. And um, we think we think of it as a win win win. If I strike people out, it's good for me. It's good for the Mariners, and it, it's good for kids in our in our Seattle area. You'll see some guys purposely striking out in the ninth inning now, but putting a <laughs> putting a car putting a car seat in might be tougher than getting out of a bases loaded jam. But there's definitely a jam in Oakland, and they're trying to they're trying to come to your city. Do you want the A's in Vegas, or do you want a expansion team in Vegas? You know, more than anything, we want the A's to stay in Oakland. That Oakland A's brand is strong. Um, I think it's. I think those fans are strong. You saw with the reverse boycott how much you know they love their team. If if they could put a team out there that they're willing to watch, um, you know the fans will be there. It's it's just so frustrating that you know we're trying to cop out and we're trying to move like like the Raiders did, and um, it's just really frustrating. And I, I feel terrible for Oakland fans. You know, I saw Bryce War. You know. A's colored cleats when they were there and, and it's like he's a Vegas guy too and I totally agree with him that expansion is the way to go it's just it's, it's going to be a really tough situation where you know people in Las Vegas are not necessarily A's fans so now you're going to now you're going to move teams and and this team you know doesn't have a ton of players that that Las Vegans really know about or, or really have watched and now they're going to they're going to try and take this team on and and um, we just saw how well the Golden Knights did with expansion. And I just really thought that that was, if you were ever going to build a team in Vegas, I thought that was the best way to do it. And, um, you know, I know we're, you know, we're getting to the 11th hour of this, unfortunately, but, um, you know, hopefully I'm still hoping out that we can figure out some way to, to keep the A's in Oakland and, and hopefully expand. And, and, you know, obviously MLB is looking for that anyways. And so if we can get to 32 teams with an expansion team in Vegas, I, that would be, that would be what I would hope for. But, um, yeah, if, if they're going to be in Vegas, then, you know, maybe I can finish my career in, in Las Vegas. I think that'd be pretty cool. We appreciate the time so much, Paul Sewell, and also sharing all that you're working on with us. Thanks for joining us here on Foul Territory and for wearing the shirt. That's fantastic. Well, you guys send me the soft shirt. The least I could do is wear it for our interviews, obviously. It's no big deal. So um, thank you for having <laughs> me, guys. I love coming on, and, and you guys are great. I appreciate it.